So, hi guys. Um, so everything you need for this kit is pretty much included in the bag that you um, picked up. We've got the prepped watercolor paper with, I did the basic drawing so that we could just get right into the watercolor. This is washi tape. It peels off easily at the end. When you're all finished, you'll peel it off and then you'll have nice crisp edges. The palette is for mixing your paints. You should have got two paint brushes. And then this is what we put the watercolor in. It may look like it's all dried up, but we're just gonna add a little bit of water to each one and you'll see the paint come back to life. The only thing not included that you might wanna grab is a paper towel or a few paper towels, maybe some tissues and a cup of water. And that is everything you need. So to get started, um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is add water to the watercolors that you got. They're gonna look old and like kind of dried out, but you just need to add that water and that's all it needs to get started again. So just take your paintbrush, probably whatever one is bigger, and kind of what we call reactivating the paint. And some of it might take a few minutes to really like get put together, but like you can see with that black, it already is back to being paint. So once you do that, one thing I like to do before I start painting is figuring out if I wanna start with the background or the foreground, the, the thing that you're painting, the main part. And since we're painting this plant, I am gonna start with this. Another good trick for that is if you start with this and then you go to the background after, this part will have dried a little and you'll be able to go back and work on this some more. Because with watercolor, you can't just like, with some other paints, just keep adding stuff on top or um, letting it dry and then getting a totally different thing. It'll kind of pull up some of, of the, the paint you've already put down. So I'll show you as we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just put like a very light green wash, okay? So sometimes I might just like put a little paint a little off to the side and then add a lot of water so that we know it's gonna stay really light. And for this, you have two greens. It's really your picture, so you can decide what you want to do. I like to add a little bit of both and see which one I like better. But okay, so now we have a bunch of water there and I'm just gonna kind of fill in what we've got. And sometimes you don't even need the paint, you can just add water and a little bit of the paint because this is kind of our first layer of it. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space at the top because that's gonna be kind of like the light coming down on the plant. And keep going down this way. Again, leaving like a little bit of white at the top. The thing about watercolors is you can't really add white after. So you have to just not paint parts that you want to stay white. And try not to use tons and tons of water. It just makes it harder and it takes longer to dry and you'll get frustrated. So start off light and not with a ton of water. So I know you can almost barely see it, but we're just gonna let that dry for now. And we're gonna go on to the vase, which you can make any color you want. Um, I think maybe this time I'm gonna make it yellow. And so I'm gonna make a watery yellow over here and do the same thing, kind of a very light. And I do keep adding water because that's just kind of how watercolors work, but we don't add like tons of water. Shouldn't be puddles on your paper. If for some reason you had too much and it kind of splotches, that's what these are for, okay? So you can go in and, and blot it and you can see that it's drying right away. Okay, so again, that's very light. We're just gonna leave it as is for right now. Now in the background, 
Um, I'm going to put like a table or we can pretend it is the ground, but right now it kind of looks like it's just floating in outer space or something, right? So I'm going to take a blue and I'm going to say it's like on a blue table. So you just need to kind of make a line where you think the table is, put it on both sides and then kind of fill that in with that blue. Now, another thing is, because everything is using water, if you use the water and then you put it right on top of something else, a different color that you've done, but it's still watery, it's gonna bleed. So you're gonna wanna leave like a little bit of white space around maybe the other part that you've done, otherwise it's gonna bleed. At the same time I'm saying that, sometimes maybe you want that to look that way. Like I'll do a little something down here. See how there's all this water now I've got blue paint. And then maybe, hmm, I will just add like a tiny, tiny bit of green. And it's gonna kind of mix in, or maybe, maybe a better way would be to add the yellow over here. and then put the blue right up next to it. And you can see that they're gonna start to kind of bleed into each other. Now, if you really don't like that, you're like, oh no, they're too close to each other. You, that, you can grab the paper again and start blotting it. But I'm gonna leave like, see how I stopped it there. I'm gonna leave a little bit so you can see what that looks like after. Okay, so I'm gonna finish the table. And then in the back, I don't know, you could do whatever you wanted. You could put flowers around it. You could pretend it's outside. You could make it the sky. Um, I'm just gonna put a real light, different blue color back there, kind of for the sky, I guess. But then maybe you wanna put like curtains, like it's a window. You literally can do anything you want. We're just practicing how the paint goes on the page, how much water we like using. Like, I want it to be really light, so I'm gonna add more water than paint. Again, not puddles, but enough that you can like see the blue without it being completely overpowering. The other thing that this is good for is if you change your mind and after you're like, oh yeah, I did wanna do a curtain or I wanna put a bird in, You'll be able to do that kind of on top, but not if you have a lot of paint there. Okay, so now that we've done a bunch of the background, I'm leaving a little bit white, but that way we can maybe add more of something else later. You can see that this is already dry, right? And that's really good because now if we wanna add more detail, we can go in and not worry about it like bleeding, like down here, like we talked about. So one thing I noticed with these cactuses is it's usually like something grows here and then it grows again and then it grows again. So it gets kind of darker as it meets the next shape. So that's what we're gonna kind of try and, and show. We're gonna make our paint a little bit darker now. More, or not even dark, but just brighter, I guess. Not as much water and more paint mixed in. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna kind of make like a line there and then if you pull up, kind of blend it in a little. And then you can add water and keep pulling. And it gets lighter as it goes up and it gives it some depth. So we're gonna do the same thing down here, a line. And then we're gonna pull it up. And then just add more water. And we'll do the same on the last part over here. And I put too much color there, but then I'm just gonna add water and keep kind of pushing it around, or you can use this and kind of blot it again. 
That makes it lighter again. If you're like, oh no, I did like that color, just go back, put it back down again. So I'm gonna let that dry. And now, remember we have this down here and it kind of bled a little. And that's kind of what it ends up looking like. You can see how they go into the two different colors. Not that much of a problem, but just wanted to show you. So if you want, you can make it a lot darker yellow, or maybe you wanna try stripes or something. You can do whatever you want for this. I think I'm gonna do stripes. I'm gonna do yellow stripes, big stripes. And I'm gonna let that dry and maybe I'll do a different color, but I don't really want them to blend too much, so I'm gonna wait till that dries. Now, same thing down here. If you wanna add stuff to the table, like, I don't know, maybe you want it a lot darker. You can do that. Um, Also, you could try just maybe making it darker on one side and it could be almost like a shadow. Although on this one, if we're having the light come, it means the shadow would be over here. So we can just do that once this part's dried a little more. And then let's see. So maybe, I don't know, let's see. We are pretending maybe that's the outside and maybe we wanna pretend there's like a tree or something. So you could put like in the distance a tree, branches, a little bit of green. or you could draw a bird, or this could be a cactus sitting inside your house in your bedroom. And you could draw your bed behind it or something. Uh, whatever you want. Let's see. So I like how those cactuses look. I'm gonna do like one more layer of a little bit darker. And I'm doing this all with the bigger brush because it just spreads everything around faster. Um, again with the line and pushing up. Now, see, as I've added like layers of water and color, the paper does start to kind of like buckle a little because the water just does that to the paper. It's not a big deal, but if you start feeling it and you're like, oh no, that's just how it is. If after it's completely dry, you put it under like some books or something, it'll flatten out. Um, okay, so maybe I'll add a little bit more detail. Maybe I'll do like dots or something. Boop. And that will dry. If you want to add more detail in the background, or if we wanted to do more of that shadow like we were talking about, let's see. Maybe we'll do blue and a tiny bit of black, not too, too much, because black gets really muddy, kind of. All right, is this a little darker? Okay, mm, tiny bit more. And a tiny bit more. They do start to like easily bleed into each other though. So you kind of have to be careful. And rinse your brush really good if you're going from color to color because now you can see my blues. Got a lot of black in it. So 
I might try and scoop like this. Save it. All right, and now over here, this could be like our shadow. And then you can add as much detail as you want. Um, if you wanna make the cactus a lot darker, if you want to add little like spines, you know how cactuses are prickly. That's pretty much what the smaller brush is for. If you wanted to go in and add details. Let's see, that's still wet. This middle one's pretty dry, so we'll just use that as an example. You could put a little like boop. Little cacti spikes. Or if you wanted to, I don't know, outline the plant, I mean uh, the planter or the, the pot, you can use the very thin brush for that. You don't have to. You could add rocks or dirt with the brown. Um, yeah, it's, it's up to you to make it your own. And I hope you have fun with it. I hope you learned something, even if it's like what not to do next time. <laughs> Sometimes that's what we learn when we try and make things. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you had fun. And uh, you can always contact me, call or email if you want to share what you've done or if you have questions, um, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, thanks guys.